season uh, kick off uh, from Egypt to Mexico. Pills Beach is ringing. Palma, big wave. And now in the newsroom, here is Mia Chiran. NC Sports, plunge into the action. Welcome back to NC Sports. We have another packed edition for you this week as the boards take center stage. Still lots of sailing and many other water sport events going on around the globe. So let's check out today's lineup. On today's top story from Laguna to La Ventana, kite season is full on. Last tickets to Rio delivered in Palma. Take a sail on the wild side. Junior pro and video maker Matteo San Marco joins the newsroom. A rough and tough Spi West. WSL announces the Big Wave Awards nominees. Then all the top Bells Beach action. Plus, so much more. A brand new pro kite season kicked off last week with freestyle and big air riders on round one of the new World Kite League in Egypt, while slalom specialists had their first taste of the Hydrofoil Pro Tour in Mexico. Now with clear world championships in place and rules, this is set to be a sensational 2016. Here's today's top story by Claudia Casagrande. Freestyle Big Air Slalom. The kite tribes were all back on the water with much awaited season openers in both Egypt and Mexico. The Red Sea Resort of El Guna set the stage for the first round of the 2016 WKL World Championships. In the freestyle finals, Brazilian Carlos Mario beat out Dutchman Yuri Zun in a hotly contested showdown in the men's camp, while co-national Bruna Kajia couldn't stop Polish wunderkind Karolina Winkowska from finessing her way to the top spot on the podium in the women's division. Both freestyle and big air competitions were slated, but poor wins made high riding impossible. Halfway around the globe in La Ventana, the 2016 Hydrofoil Pro Tour also made its season debut. While conditions were generally favorable, one meteorological incident did raise questions about the rules of the relatively new discipline. Winds died suddenly in one of the race finals, prompting riders to swim across the finish line for a spot on the leaderboard, and leaving both judges and competitors unsure about what rules to apply. French rider Maxime Nochet dominated the entire competition from start to finish and walked away with top honors. The season opener also saw Russian rider Elena Kalinina become the first woman ever to compete on the Hydrofoil Tour, which consists of four rounds and a final to be held in Perth, Australia. Meanwhile, World Sailing, also the official governing body for kiteboarding, has outlawed two upcoming engagements after allegations of improper event designation and authority as they were being run by the International Federation of Kite Sports Organizations. The events in question are the first Junior Kite Sports Freestyle World Cup, scheduled for April, and the Kitefoil Silver Cup World Series, originally set for May. Eurosaf's Trofeo Princesa Sofia has now reached its 47th edition. It's not just a Spanish classic in the med, for some it was the very last chance to make it to the Rio Games. Well today, to get some real perspective on what it means to reach the Olympic heights, we have a very special guest in the newsroom. Meet Matteo San Marco, under 19 laser sailor and also a remarkable video maker. Hello, Matteo, and thank you for being here with us. Hello, Mia. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the introduction. Now, Matteo, you're competing on a national and European level on the laser radio. Is that correct? Yes. Now, but before we get into the subject, let's first take a look at this report right in from Palma. Absolutely. Let's check it out.
31 to 12 knot breezes uh, with gusts up to 15 have been putting on a real show in Palma de Mallorca this week as the Spanish island hosts the annual Trofeo Princesa Sofia. While no longer on the Sailing World Cup calendar, much like a Kia week, it remains a must for most top international crews in the Olympic classes. On a mate course layout at the city front and with multiple ongoing regattas for the entire week, this was one last a great chance to see where the gold, the silver and bronze might shine in Rio 2016. Unstoppable in the qualifiers, Australia's Belcher and Ryan enjoy a comfortable lead entering the medal races set for Saturday in men's 470. Much like among the women with Oliveira and Barbachan from Brazil. Spain, Austria and Germany get to fight it out on the 49ers, while among the ladies on the FX, it's a duel for gold between Holland and Denmark. Besson and Ryu are on top of the Nakra 17 fleet again, and it's an open call in the Finns with Kiwi Josh Jr. in the lead. Rindom, Van Acker and Tenkanen are elbowing on the laser radio podium, but in men's laser standard, the chase is on another Kiwi, Andrew Maloney. Freeway final rush is set for the men's RSX with Squires, Kalkalanis and Tarnowski. Even more heart stopping on the ladies course with world champ Picon, Alabao, Nocheti Klepachka and Tartaglini all within range. Finals in Palma will also hand out real spots for the last two participating countries in each class. The reactions from the winners and the losers on the next NC Sports Edition. Now, Mateo, coming to us. You're a junior transitioning into a senior. What I'd really like to know from you is what it means to take on a pro sailing career. There must be lots of sacrifices involved. Yes, yes, a lot. Um, sailing is a sport that requires a lot of time. And, you know, when you don't have a lot of time in your hands, you have to be organized. And, uh, you know, when I was younger, I, I wasn't the most organized kid. But sailing actually helped me tackle emergencies. Well, this helped me a lot also in real life and it helped me how to organize myself to do things, go parallel with school and, uh, and sailing. And right now I just started college. It seems to be easier because I'm used to organizing things and I'm free now. Good. So organization, time organization yes. mainly. Now Rio is going central stage in just a few weeks. Uh, let's get some expert uh, predictions from you, starting with the lasers. Obviously, what are the medals? What do you figure? Well, uh, predicting a gold medal is always a really hard question, but I have to say Francesco Marai, the Italian laser sailor, is my favorite. He won the Rio test event. I think the Belgian team has some really strong candidates, both in the laser radial standard and the radial girls. We have the Van Acker and the girls, and Van Zeller and the men, and they're going pretty good. We'll be continuing our chat with Matteo San Marco shortly to discover not just the athlete, but the artist as well. But first, coming up next are the NC Sports Briefs. Authorities and Morbihan and race directors put up the stop sign after just the three days of racing last weekend at P38 the Speed West of France. A violent storm overwhelmed the Brittany over the weekend as NC Sports sources on the ground reported gale force conditions with gusts up to 80 knots. A prestigious spring classic in France, the Spi West maintains its tradition as a regatta open to all, from the pro to the amateur, and everything in between. With over 350 boats and 16 classes on the water, the disappointment of course is swept across the board, as even the event's entire village remained closed Sunday for safety reasons. In most cases, winners were decided by those few races placed in the early rounds.
group of nominees has been announced for the 2016 WSL Big Wave Awards, taking place on April 13th in Anaheim, California. Nearly 1,600 entries were received this year, following one of the most intense El Nino-fueled seasons in recent history. Organizers have released the names of candidates such as Shane Dorian, Nathan Florence, Tyler Laurent, Albie Lair, Garrett McNamara, Mick Corbett, Pedro Scooby, and many more in four of the seven awards categories, including the Ride of the Year, the Paddle, the Biggest Wave, and the Barrel of the Year, awarded to the surfer who rides the single most spectacular tubing wave. Surfer Keala Kennelly has already made history by becoming the first female ever to be nominated in this last open gender category. Nominations for the big three remaining awards, overall men's and women's performances and wipeout of the year, will be announced shortly. Look for updates in the next edition of NC Sports. With all bids received, including the appropriate documentation by the 24 March closing date, World Sailing has recently announced that the venue selection process for the upcoming 2016 Youth World Championship is now officially in progress. Sailing's global authority will announce the final decision after quote-unquote a comprehensive process by mid-April. The news is especially significant following the Malaysia vs. Israel discrimination case at last year's The Youth Worlds and the complete pullout of the Emirates and Oman just last month after World Sailing hardened its stance as well as the enforcement of International Olympic Committee rules. According to World Sailing officials now selecting the replacement venue, discrimination cases like these are also common in other Olympic sports. So, Mateo, as you've seen, there's always plenty of great water sports stories reaching the newsroom. Sailing aside, I wanted to ask you, what other disciplines have you taken on? Well, I had the chance to surf a lot because when I used to sail Optimus with my team, uh, we, we would train at the beach and uh, whenever there were two big waves, we couldn't go out sailing because it was too dangerous. And so everybody had their surfboard and we would go surfing. And so I cultivated a pretty big passion for surfing, even though Rome doesn't permit it so much. You can go to Santa Marinello. Yeah, just, which is fairly close. Yeah, it's like a 40 minute drive. And uh, I also love skateboarding because right. skateboarding is really similar to, to surfing. And I always have a skateboard in the back of my car because, you know, in Rome, Rome? Yes. you go through the traffic as well? Uh, yes. Okay. You shouldn't do that though. Yeah, don't try this at home, yes. definitely. <laughs> okay, now we'll be continuing our chat with Matteo shortly as soon as we come back on NC Sports. We're back on NC Sports and all eyes this week are of course on Bells Beach for the second WSL stop in Australia. Now Matteo, you mentioned earlier that you also like surfing besides from sailing. Now these are two very different sports, but do they have anything in common? Well obviously they both happen in the water, on the water, and so the connection to the ocean is a key point that they both have. And uh, I think that uh, surfing has taught me how to wait for the perfect wave and uh, sailing has taught me how to wait for the perfect wind, for the perfect gust and so uh, they're both sports that play on your patience and you got to learn how to deal with that. Well, they're obviously passions that I want to keep up for the rest of my life. Well, we'll follow up on that shortly but let's hear first what's going on at Bells Beach where the early rounds already produced some major upsets.
The much-awaited swell incoming from south of Tasmania never did quite materialize into major sets this week at Bells Beach for the opening rounds of this a second WSL stopover in the 2016 season. And with the surfers trying to make the best of the tactical 1-2 to two meter waves, the men's court witnessed the, some unexpected early eliminations. Down went uh, Kelly Slater and the last two world champs, Medina and De Sosa, were on the chase. Just like uh, JJ Florence uh, still looking for that winning edge. But the insatiable Brazilian superstar factory has three more replacements moving up with Ferreira, Dantas, and De Baby. Bills is also looking up for Bure and Ho, while among the Aussies, uh, Parco took the exit door and with sense of humor. But Fanning uh, kept solid uh, just like Matt Wilkinson, defending his yellow jersey. Season of forecasts are instead uh, being confirmed on the women's break as most favorites moved up the ladder. Defending champ uh, Carissa Moore dominated throughout her heats much like Sally Fitzgibbons, now on a real comeback. While the other two Aussie aces, uh, Steph Gilmore and uh, Tyler Wright, scraped their way back into contention. A consistent uh, Joanne DeFay is proving that she can trouble the leaders now. While this uh, 2016 Bells Beach Pro brought out the best in rookies Alessa Kisson and Tatiana Weston Webb. Final rounds in southeastern Australia are now underway, with wave conditions also expected to improve. The full results, the interviews, and the insight on the next NC Sports Update. Okay, Matteo, now we've seen your sports background. We also know that you're number two in the Italian rankings, but you also have another passion, which is video making, and apparently you're quite good at it. Or at least the folks at Sailing Anarchy think so, since they reposted this video that we're watching. What is this about? Well, um, last week I went to the Europa Cup for the Laser Radio, and uh, I went with my team. And the purpose of this video is just to show how much fun we had, because we really do have a lot of fun in our sport, and um, we're just trying to find a way to show it to the other people. And, uh, well, the making of this video was, uh, it was really fun, actually. I have a passion for, for music, and I try to bring the music together with the video because I like to feel the rhythm that the elements give us. Like, you know, the waves. Sailing is a, is a very rhythmic sport because you have to get in tune with the, with the waves, and I, I try to connect my videos to the music, and I guess this is why people like them. Well, it definitely looks like fun. Now, you're Italian-American, born in Boston, living in Rome, is that correct? Yes. Now, this year you're moving up to Laser Standard against all of the big names. Does this scare you at all? Do you have any expectations? Well, yes it is, and to tell you the truth, I am a little scared because I'm not a very tall man, and you have to be a tall man to, to sail the Laser Standard. And uh, I still have two years in my under-21 category, so I might save myself in the national team for a little bit more. But then, yes, I have to go against all the big names. And, uh, you know, it's even fun to, to race against them, even if you don't beat them. It's, it's, you know, you race against Robert Scheidt, and it's really, really exciting. Now, you're also an engineering student, and you'll be at a crossroad quite soon. Will you have to make a decision? Will you be able to keep all passions at the same level? Well, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to keep them all parallel. And uh, I want to see how much, how much time I can keep this up. And, uh, you know, I have two years in my under-21 category still. And I guess that by the end of those years, I'll see. I will have to choose. Can you make a living out of a sailing pro well, career? It is really, really hard, especially in a country like Italy, where uh, not a lot of people follow it, and uh, you really have to depend on, on yourself. Well, thank you for staying with us, Matteo. Thank you for joining us. We'll be following your 2016 season closely, and hope to have you back on NC Sports very soon. Thank you very much.
Thank you. And now, the ex-cats are back. St. Barth gears up for Le Voile, and WSL Tour moves to Margaret River. It's all coming up next on the NC Sports Calendar. The season opener of the 2016 UIM XCAT World Series gets underway in Fujairah in the United Arab Emirates April 7th and 8th. This year's challengers include defending champions Al Zafain and Bin Hendi of Team X Dubai, 2015 runners-up Al Tair and Al Mansouri of Abu Dhabi 5, as well as Italian duo Poli Nicolini of Team 6. A total of 14 teams will battle it out in seven rounds, culminating in the grand finale in Dubai in early December. With speeds of up to 90 knots per hour, XCAT is one of the most extreme forms of powerboat racing under the WPPA banner. The 7th edition of Les Voiles de saint Bart will take place from April 11th to 16th with a list of challengers that reads like a who's who of the sailing world. Dutch skipper Bowie Becking will be there, as will America's current Yachtsman of the Year Steve Benjamin, and Spanish navigator and Volvo Ocean Race veteran Guillermo Atadil, along with many more offshore notables like David Sampson, Nathan Ellis and America's Cup veteran Mal Parker. This year's godfather will be American Ken Reed. The popularity of the Caribbean regatta has grown steadily since its launch in 2010, not least for what many skippers refer to as its outstanding offshore ambience. The WSL Men's and Women's Drug Aware Margaret River Pro kicks off April 8th to 19th in Preverly, Western Australia, marking the last Aussie appointment on the 2016 Championship Tour calendar. Frenchman Michel Bourré and Brazilian Adriano de Souza are the only two current CT surfers to have captured elite titles here in 2014 and 2015 respectively. In the women's camp, reigning world champ Carissa Moore from Hawaii had two consecutive wins at Margaret's in 2013 and 2014, while American Courtney Conlog claimed the title in last year's edition. We're out of time for today, but we'll be back next week as usual with more great stories as well as all the top news and events from the spectacular world of water sports. I'm Mia Chiran, and remember, plunge into the action with NC Sports. <laughs>